the Water Pollution Control Authority and regular town council meeting to water for Tuesday, July 9th, 2019 at 7.04 p.m. We'll start first with salute to the flag. <laughs> approve the minutes of June 18, 2019, Town Council meeting. So moved. Second. Any corrections? Roll call. Mayor Duty. Yes. Deputy Mayor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor Diamond. Yes. Councilor Fauna. Yes. Councilor Miller. Yes. Councilor Rose. Yes. Councilor Viglione? Yes. Councilor Zampiano? Yes. Moving to the Water Pollution Control Authority agenda, correspondence, citizen statements. There's nothing listed. Unfinished business, nothing listed. New business. Citizen statements and petitions under the Water Pollution Control Authority. Moving to our regular town council agenda. Reports of Committees, boards, and commissions. Economic Development Commission. Um, Economic Development met last Monday night. Um, there is also a synopsis in our agenda packet starting on page 20. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but the Sunflower Destination North Bramford Sunflower Program um, has been very successful as far as giving out sunflowers. Um, you'll notice driving into Town Hall, there are rows of sunflowers that have been planted and are up. So those should be coming into bloom in the next couple weeks. Um, they also have done a video and they are planning on unveiling the video at the, um, the night before the Potato Fest starts on that Thursday night when they have their, um, the economic development does a program underneath the big tent um, and they're planning on doing the unveiling at that point in time. Um, Roger has been very busy talking with various businesses and also in regards to the program with the area shoreline towns that was discussed during our budget session. Um, I think this one is calling, is it the, I think it's the three C's. Yes. Is that it with the Aryan, Aryan towns? Um, and we no longer belong to Rex, but this is a new organization that they're talking about as far as economic development. Um, and they've come up with an initial cost of $3,000 per town, which will be coming forward to the council as everyone putting in to start this program off. Um, the 3E program with the libraries um, has been very successful uh, that they did last winter into the spring and they are already planning for next year. Um, they continue to have talks with two different groups in regards to 1599 Foxen Road and if anything comes of that, that will come back before the council. And the rest you can read in, the, in our packet. Thank you. Park and Rec Commission. Uh, there was no meeting. Police Commission. There was no meeting, but there will be a special <coughs> meeting on July 15th. Fire Commission. Uh, there was no meeting. Board, Board of Education and Town Council Communication Subcommittee. Uh, no meeting. Town Planning Goals Subcommittee. No meeting. Planning and Zoning Commission. They've got a meeting Thursday night that um, they got a bunch of text amendments on that uh, might be worth sitting in on. Next, East Shore 
District Health Department. Next is North Brantford Police Department Facility and Town Center Advisory Committee. The, uh, the next meeting is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. here in Town Council Chambers. And finally, Finance Subcommittee. Uh, there was no meeting since the last one. Move on to the Town Manager's Report. Uh, actually, uh, I'll just go to comment on uh, Deputy Mayor's uh, report on the EDC. The uh, C3, as they're calling it, is the Central Coast Coalition, and I'll put together a uh, you know, proposal uh, as mentioned, that they're looking to seeking 3,000. All the other towns have already committed uh, those dollars for the marketing study and to get this organization up and running. So uh, I'll present their proposal um, and bring that forward for the next meeting on the 23rd. Okay. Thank you. Next is community events and presentations. Next is citizen statements, petitions, and correspondence. is resignations and appointments now we'll move into unfinished business discussion and action future budget plan and initiative I have no items at this point update on 944 Totok Road remediation uh, the grading plan for that project was approved by the Yellow uh, Commission at the June meeting <coughs> really in the property owner Is that removed off site or moved to a different area on site? Okay. Thank you. Next is investigation of Park and Rec Commission. Yeah, th this on this item, uh, you'll find at your desk, at your seat, the uh, report uh, that uh, uh, the town attorney and I put together. Um, not sure where you want to take this, but maybe skip over, go into executive session is an appropriate place to. Uh, talk about that and then and then come back if you and, and, and realizing that it's only coming to you now uh, that you'll want time to digest it or maybe even table it entirely for the next meeting I'm not sure okay next is review of responses for RFP number 9 <laughs> 2018 2019 feas feasibility study for North Brantford High School Yes, yeah, so here are the other are numbers uh, for that, and um, my my guess is that you'll want a possibly a joint meeting with the uh, board of education uh, to look over and not only look at uh, uh, the numbers here, but the actual proposals that the uh, firms have submitted. Don't know if you want that in in as a uh, lead up to the meeting on the 23rd or you'll need more time maybe a six o'clock meeting before the regular meeting on the 23rd well there are three proposals there in excess of our budget allotment correct correct so it seems to me why don't we talk to all four of them? The board of Ed yeah. should definitely be involved in this. Talk to the lower four. Yeah. You want to see if they could get a date um, to get with us? Sure. No, I'll help you coordinate that, yeah. On a, a separate then night? We, or then, then we could look at the last four. The maybe, August, August, maybe the August meeting. Because one is three. just over at fifty-five thousand, and we six. have and we have fifty thousand. So it's whether we want. I mean, we can still talk to them. They're close, and we would just have to decide if we, if that ends up being the one, we would have to allocate some more money. Or, or but we, we can tell them that our allotment is five thousand dollars less than what they've been. If they're interested <coughs> in talking. They may want to sharpen the pencil. Yeah. Okay. Your proposals just the EEOC if you wanted to see them prior to the whole office is filling proposals. Yeah, we can get those out, but uh, from a from a date standpoint, I think Councilor Diamond. I'm, su I'm suggesting August because we give them enough time, enough notice. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Next uh, is. And our August meeting is the 20th. It's a week yes, later, later yeah. than. And would you would you prefer it on that night as, as a as a double meeting, or do you want a separate night? Well, I can it be at like a six o'clock. Six. Yeah. 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 Six, okay. I will pull them with that date. Next is uh, lease purchases for 2019-2020 fiscal year. Uh, continuation from the last meeting where we had basically three items uh, that we were going off for lease purchase pricing, the annual board that technology lease is $400,000 uh, for the public works backhaul truck and then roughly $100,000 for the pumper. Uh, I was asked to solicit proposals with both a $200,000 payment in year one and a $300,000 payment in year one. And the uh, last page, oh. the third page of the schedule, uh, the memo has the interest costs um, for the TD equipment, which is the lowest uh, lowest bidder, with a $200,000 payment. The overall interest for all, all three aspects would be about $40,800. If you went with a $300,000 payment in year one, the total interest cost would be 36762 roughly. The bottom of that column shows the different technology amounts based on, again, again tied to the interest rates. And TD, with their uh, aggressive 2.01 interest rate, allows us to buy 271759 of technology. The recommendation is to go with TD equipment. The only thing that's left for you folks to decide is you want the $200,000 or $300,000 year one payment. Have you talked to the fire commission in terms of the, you had, you had that blank there with it in terms of the pumper truck? Is that? Well, the, 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 the blank is to tell you guys to decide if you want the two hundred thousand payment or three hundred thousand dollar payment. Do you want to empty the reserve, or do you want to go with two hundred thousand, leave hundred thousand behind? That's it's all funding. So when you fund it now, pay me now, pay me later kind of thing. Okay. The three hundred thousand results in about a four thousand dollar overall savings on interest, which seems to make sense, but that's the city. How much again on interest savings? Uh, about four thousand dollars. And that, on the last page, total interest A, total interest B, is forty thousand eight forty six compared to thirty six thousand seven sixty two. So a little over four thousand dollars of, of interest savings by going with a bigger payment in year one. But you're saying that's wiping out the reserve if you do that? Correct. Well, we don't need a reserve in the fire equipment reserve account. So if I remember correctly, the last last meeting, we kind of kicking this around and saying, okay, what happens if we waited till next year, added another three hundred thousand. Now you have six hundred thousand. Then it was all a comment was made that you probably wouldn't have the truck before then, anyways. So couldn't we figure that in? Like we'll pay the, you know, we have the three thousand in the bank now, say, you know, in, in the you know in the reserve, mm -hmm. and you know, next year we allocate 300 more, that's 600, and try to buy it as close to outright as we can. Was that the pumper or the aerial or either one of them? Pumper. This, this, is, the this pumper. is the pumper. I know this is the pumper, but is it the delay of the year? Is it any, any, truck, up? any apparatus can be, unless, unless the chief is able to find a, a demo, as he had mentioned. But that's right, yeah, they right. did mention that. If you happen to find a demo that meets your needs, you can get it. But if, if we go along the lines of what Tommy's suggesting, are we not just kicking the can down the road because a year from now, we've got $600,000, but that truck's not going to be right. Two delivered. Years no, Two years. no, 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 could they order now? Right, order now, and then, you know, we have the 300, because, I mean, you're not, you, I can't imagine you're paying for it outright. Or are you? You're, not, you're, you're, paying you're really payment. the first year. It's advanced funded lease payments, so you're paying the. Okay. When you close, you're making the payment. Okay. Really, you're really not kicking it down a year because you're giving them now two years to find a use truck, uh, find a um, demo truck. Right. So. Didn't you say though it's possible we could find one during the summer at the different shows? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever wanted that's, to be on I think TV? That's what the fire chief want said. to reach out to the public? <laughs> <We're using it>. <laughs> <laughs> George, you there? Uh, yes, Somebody I'm else here. is there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, look. I just thought I'd make that comment. No, it's a, yeah, legit, it's a legitimate question. Right. Like if it takes, yeah. Made, you're going to see it again when we get to Franny's Mac truck. But, but, but I guess even if we, you know, did it, did it this way, and then come next year, I mean, what, couldn't we have the plan say, okay, come next year rather than, 
make start creating a new lease for a new piece of equipment, try to pay this one off, you know, and it's not necessarily kicking the can down the road. It's more of trying not to. Uh, well, because if, if we commit to it that we're going to buy it, <coughs> we're, we're committed to fund it. I mean, right. if, we're, if we say go ahead and buy a truck and we're going to lease it, we have to fund it. Yeah, well, I don't think there's anything that prohibits us from prepaying other than the fact of where interest rates are next year. Correct. It seems that the economy is going in a direction where interest rates are going to be higher. So 2.01%, you may not be in a rush to pay off. Or prepay, but that's a decision you can make right. next year. Right. And with the three hundred thousand dollar payment in year one, your payments in year two, three, and four are about one hundred and seventy-four thousand. So put in put in in the subsequent three years, one hundred and seventy-five thousand. So we don't have to fund the three hundred thousand. So the three hundred three hundred thousand dollar now is one hundred and seventy-five. If you went with the two hundred thousand payment, your annual is about two hundred eighty. For the next three years, I think. We've yeah. What's the chance of him finding a demo? He's been, he's been hunting around. He's been trying. Uh, I no, no success as of yet. There's an upcoming uh, New York State Fire Chief show. He went to the show down in um, uh, the casinos, and there was nothing there that would meet our needs. But he's, he's still got dealers out there. And he's still I don't think it's an easy, easy thing to do. Right. Um, Plus you need a certain kind of truck. Luck of the draw. Yeah, you can't just go pick one out and say, okay, we'll take that. All right. So no two pumper trucks are alike? <laughs> no, they're different. No, they're different. Yeah. different. Different connections, different, a lot of different things. Some for rural areas, some for cities, right. you know. Whole, yeah. Whole different look. Yep. We have a suggested motion it's a long motion okay whereas the governing body of lessee has determined that a true and very real need exists for the acquisition of the equipment described in the lease purchase agreement and whereas the governing body of lessee has taken the necessary steps including any legal binding requirements under applicable law to arrange for the acquisition of such equipment be it resolved by the North Brantford Town Council that the terms of said lease purchase agreement are in the best interest of lessee for the acquisition of such equipment and the governing body of lessee designates and confirms the following persons to execute and deliver and to witness or attest respectively the lease purchase agreement and any related documents necessary to the consummation of the transactions contemplated by the lease purchase agreement with TD Equipment Finance to acquire approximately <coughs> 271,759.34 of technology for the Board of Education, funding for a 400,000 backhaul truck, and funding for an $800,000 pumper truck utilizing a payment in year one of $300,000 based on a four-year advanced funding interest rate of 2.01% per annum, subject to the review and approval by the town attorney's office. Be it hereby resolved that the North Brantford Town Council authorizes Michael T. Paulus, town manager, and Anthony P. Esposito, CPFO, treasurer finance director, to sign the necessary paperwork to enter into a lease purchase with TD Equipment Finance to acquire approximately 271,759.34 of technology for the Board of Education, funding for a 400,000 backhaul truck, and funding for an 800,000 pumper truck, utilizing a payment in year one of, of 300,000 based on a four year advanced funding interest rate of 2.01 per annum, subject to the review and approval by the town attorney's office. Second. Discussion? Yeah, I do have one comment, and that was, you know, um, you know, with interest rates, if they were low, you you may not want to pay it pay it that quick, but that's that's not really um, accurate because zero is better than two percent. Just wanted to make that comment. Roll call. Mayor Dewey. Yes. Deputy Mayor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor Diamond. Yes. Councilor Fornan. Yes. Councilor Miller. Yes. 
Councilor Rose. Yes. Councilor DeGlion. Yes. Councilor Zampano. Yes. Next item is a review of approved contract for deputy chief position. That contract has already been approved by the Board of Police Commissioners. So no action is needed on that position. Yeah, we don't we don't really we don't have any say, do we? No. Is that so, uh, so I, I know uh, there's been a lot of a conversation ab uh, about whether or not uh, this body has the kind of the override authority of whether or not uh, this contract is, a, is appropriate. And uh, prior to the meeting, I reviewed the statutes. I also reviewed your ordinance and your charter. Uh, and I do believe you have some authority, but I believe it's very limited. Uh, I don't believe you can supplant your judgment for that of the police commission with respect to the material terms of that contract. Your review would be limited uh, by section 77.6 of your town code to, uh, in order for you to overturn the decision of the police commission, uh, you would have to make a finding. So th th let me just read the, the sentence in section 77-6. It says specifically with respect to the salary for the uh, for the police chief or the deputy chief, the town council shall accept the recommendation of the police commission unless in your sole discretion you determine that the public interest and the financial capability of the town, including consideration of other demands on the financial capability of the town, requires compensation in a lesser amount. So you have to actually make a finding that the town cannot afford uh, the ability, to, doesn't have the ability to pay. And so uh, that, is, that is your limitation of review. Uh, so unless you have some evidence to support that you cannot afford this, then I think your, your review is limited by uh, the ordinance that you adopted uh, in the language of 77-6. Thank you. So why is this on our agenda? Because, because it, is, it is your right to say yes, I find, or no, I don't. And uh, so you can simply take no action, and it'll... it'll and you, you, what you told, somebody just told us, this has already been adopted by the police commission, so it's a fait accompli, and other than the finding you just referred to, there's nothing we can do about this. That's my, based on uh, the ordinance, I believe that to be true. Contract this is just what we just went through. We've got a six-year contract handed to us that said, this is done. Unless you make a finding under 77-6 of the ordinance that you can't afford. Okay. A position we eliminated about eight years ago, and to my knowledge, there's been no negative repercussion in those eight years because of the elimination of the position. And now we're filling that position, and I assume filling the lieutenant's position as well. That I, I don't have any information about. Well, I'm glad we had it on our agenda. So it raised my blood pressure a few points, that's all. Okay. Moving on, next is a review of special accounts 225 fund details for town departments. Again, a follow up from the last meeting, there was discussion about the 225 fund. I mentioned it was about 25 to 30 pots, and that was pretty close. Uh, what these are specifically are things that have identifiable revenue and identifiable expenditures. Uh, the self insurance deductible, again, for anytime we have an accident with a vehicle, we put money into that and pay the, the uh, deductible out of that. Retention. The biggest one, the quarter bed 1% fund from the uh, last year uh, is sitting in this pot. The town clerk, when she takes in recordings for the state statute, there's like a dollar fee that is contributed into this pot. Uh, other noteworthy, one, no, noteworthy ones are uh, people who have uh, died and left money behind. Uh, number 10 is that the lowest polarity fund, a woman who has uh, passed and left some money behind her. The North Cranford on the beach, the land the dog park, that money was sitting in here. Uh, community Day, Animal Angels, they were raising money for, for animal uh, aspects. When we put the FEMA storms, we run the money into here so it doesn't charge Fran's uh, expenses for his personnel and those kind of things. We put the money, the expense gets this fund and the FEMA money gets this fund so it kind of washes in and out. So those are the... What, what, what's the child safety one? 
That's, that's, that's Al, Al Rose's Al, nephew. Al Rose, yeah. um, so I was gonna I was gonna ask you, Anthony, if you could, because I forgot how it was set up. Yeah. Can we look into it and see how it's set up? Because I think it's just sitting there stagnant. Correct. So, so could we look into like who's in charge of it and yeah. and like I mean then maybe somebody could ask to yeah, I was just or curious. apply to right. use some of it or even teachers could right. could apply for a, something you know. Correct. I'll pull out the history on it to see you know, when, it, when it was started and what the parameters were. Thanks. And you notice the new ones on there in number 15 and 16 are the two pots you created uh, last meeting for the fingerprint um, fee revenue and the extra duty police vehicle use fee. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand those two. And maybe other ones operate the same way as those two. That's that's the, the confusion I had in the last in the last meeting was if, if, a, if you know a certain number like twenty five dollars comes in right. ten goes here and fifteen goes here why I, I, that part I don't get the one with well, the fingerprint one is when the people are, the fee that they pay for the fingerprint will go into that fund and eventually they they're gonna have to buy their fingerprint machine well some of the it's my understanding that some of the fingerprint money they is, is if they have to pay the fee right. that they charge they have to pay someone else to state to okay for some of the permits, correct. right some of the permits. and then the the balance that is charged so let's say if they have to pay 70 if they charge 100 and they have to pay 75 the balance of 25 would go into this pot correct, correct? And that's re-mentioned to replace that it, machine then, down the road right. instead of having the taxpayers pay for it it's, it's like pay. a user fee basically the, the users of that fingerprint machine would create a fund that you buy a replacement machine out of. And Similarly with, with the police vehicle usage. I guess if, if the if the funds mature enough over time, you can buy a vehicle out of there after several years of accumulation. Again, instead of taking it out of taxation, the people that are using, whether it's UI or those kind of folks using the police vehicle, that money right. being separated to be used to buy it. So I guess the, my question, and I'm not sure it was answered last meeting, so is there a restriction on this these funds for instance X number of dollars goes into the into the fingerprint um, um, account can it be used for anything else same thing with the vehicle um, well, well they would duty. have to make a request to right. us so correct that, that, uh, that's correct. that's what I'm asking there, there's, there's no formal the answer question there's no formal policy it was only created last last meeting so there's no yeah. True. I think the, the, the will of the, of the town council is that the fingerprinting revenue will be used to replace a fingerprinting machine, and theoretically the police vehicle use money will be used to potentially replace a vehicle down the road. It's not going to be used to paint the office, let's say. It's kind of specific to what the, the pot is generated by. But your question is valid. There's no, going back to Al's question, you know, is, is there, for each of these 28 pots, is there specific regulations? And probably not. A lot of them, you know, if someone chooses to die and leaves memorial contributions to the town, we create a fund for that person's name. And usually the family has control of what they look like in uh, number number nine, let's say. That's a, one of our librarians' mom passed away. Yeah, th those those I understand. The, the, the ones I don't understand or that I'm getting clarification on are the ones that are actually linked to a department. And you know, and it's extra funds going in there, Correct. and it's being said that they're going to be used for a specific reason, and that that's all. That's, that's where I'm, that's what I'm asking. I mean, you, you can make you can make it a policy that it has to come uh, after you folks for for blessing. And I'm just picking those just because yeah, those no. are the easy ones because those are the ones that were identified yeah. last time. So I just well, like the board of ed, the one percent fund <coughs> that has the most in there is they. They would have to come right. to us to say they want one hundred fifty thousand dollars because they're putting in some new yeah. something new or a new program or wh however they right. come to us and then it would be up to us to. Well, is it is, is that a certain dollar amount for that? Any. Any. Any they can come so to if us. It's right. Now the interesting one you mentioned the number two there. Um, in discussing with, with the manager, there's some, um, um, maybe Jamie's office, is, there's another office is involved in that. With, we have two existing heart and hypertension cases that they identified, and it might behoove us to, as we're cleaning up the 18, 19 year, if we have some additional money, 
to transfer it into that pot. There might be some um, action, I guess you want to say, or settlements along that line for those folks. So there, that 30000 that's in there might not be enough to cover. Um, so when you get to the point where you're cleaning up and you have excess dollars and you want, want us to put there. some there, if yeah. you have all the information that you can give us, that would probably be helpful. Where did the original 30000 come from in the high part? High part? I think over, there was several years ago when, when we first had our first person that was identified, we, put, we scraped some money into the air and threw it in there. Um, there's been some minor claims against it, some, uh, some legal bills have gone, that's why it's an odd number, some legal bills have gone against it for some prior work. Um, but I think it might, as we're... Again, we have two folks that have been identified and it might be worth us uh, putting some money there to have the reserve. I, I think Tom's concerns are very genuine and legitimate, and I don't think these funds should be in any way encouraged to be expanded or increased. If, if there is a, an obligation to town, I think it should be funded from our general operating fund, not from what really is a slush fund that nobody seems to really understand, and apparently there are no controls over. There's a total of uh, half a million dollars here right. with no supervision whatsoever. I, I think this, this is a, a recipe for a, for a real problem. Well, the, the, the largest one, as Rose mentioned, the 1% fund, that's kind of an anomaly. That, that goes under the you know, board better come back to you. Well, there's, there's bigger funds than that. Right. The, the, the self-insurance deductible, that, that's a fluid account. Every, every week we're having car accidents. So there's money going in once a year, the deductible comes out of that. The um, town clerk, again, every time he does a recording, a fee goes into that. And that, that the parameters of what that can be spent for are set out by state statute. Um, she has to do record preservation type events. Uh, those expenses come out of there. Uh, the other ones, quite honestly, are aside from those first half dozen, are, are really kind of small potatoes, and again, the, the ten thousand dollar one in, in number ten again as a benefactor of the library. Uh, the number nineteen, the, the child safety one, again uh, part of Al's family. Uh, aside from that, they're not really much there. A lot of the, the zero ones could be cleaned up. Hurricane Sandy obviously is done. Blizzard Nemo has a little bit of money in there. We must have uh, got a little bit more back than we anticipated. I, I'm sure these accounts were set up with good intentions right. no, at the I, time I, they were created. I, I, and I, I, I'm not suggesting there's anything untoward going on, but these are the type of accounts that you find out somewhere down the road 10, 15 years from now, somebody's been using as their personal funds, and until they get arrested because an auditor picks it up, we don't even know the money is there. And it happens. I, I saw it happen in New Haven. There was a director of development that was arrested for using it as an account that he had control over that nobody knew existed. That's exactly what these type of accounts are. Mm -hmm. And there are, the potential there is that they are, can be abused. I don't really think we should be encouraging these things. I, I, I understand what you're saying 100%. And like I said, the, the alternative is to have the fees go into general fund revenue and then when the time comes to replace the machine just to pay it out of taxation. That's, that's certainly an alternative. Well, it, it is done now, but I, I frankly think that would have been the more appropriate way to approach it. I'm just one vote. Can, can I go back to a comment you made on the, on the, I think it was item one, you said that, you know, we're having car accidents often. Mm -hmm. Who's having car accidents? <laughs> Town vehicles. Town vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to have one? I mean, but do we have a, do we have a policy for that? Insurance policy? Yeah. No, 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 no. Like if they get into I, an accident? I mean, yeah, you not, shouldn't not be having them. accidents all the time. I, I know you're just generalizing, but it, it really <laughs> struck. I mean, I, 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 you know, I just have to reflect back to what I'm used to. I work for a company that safety is number one by far above every, everything, including also, the customer. This also pertains to our, our legal. We have a couple of people suing us for uh, different issues, and the first 5000 is out of our pocket. comes out of that pot. So again, our deductible, okay. whether it's a, a car accident or whether it's a, a lawsuit for a variety of reasons, the deductible okay. comes out here. But do yeah, we, we have, have a safety, policy we, as yes, far as how many place. accidents you can have? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I'm just that. I just <laughs> Well, the police department has a policy. They investigate accidents. If the officer's at fault, they get disciplined. You know, okay. there's, right. there's a certain, sure and I'm, sure the, I'm sure the fire department has the same policy, you know, 
for, for their investigation of accidents, which usually the police department investigates it, reports it to the fire chief, and then. I think we'll got you was there every other week. Yeah, well. <laughs> Unless it's in a different <laughs> town. If it's in uh, an ambulance backed into something in New Haven, right. you know, um, that's okay. reported, and then, you know. There are police reports for every, every situation. Okay. Right. Yeah, you have to realize, too, Tommy, that the responding emergency calls, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, police, fire. No, I'm, I'm not even, I wasn't even really thinking about the police and fire. I was thinking about all the other vehicles. Well, well these guys are out on the road, too, all the time. You know, it's just, it's concerning. For any guys? <laughs> Well, no, I mean, not, not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, <laughs> general, again. We have a few <laughs> winter accidents, uh, you know. No, it's, uh, a few mailboxes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, I All agree right. with you, though. The statement just kind of sat yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next review of line item, transfer procedure. Uh, again, following the last meeting, there was discussion about the ability to forecast and do transfers prior. I did go back and find in section 8.6 of the town charter, uh, that section D in there talks about the road transfer and it should be before incurring any expenditure therefore. This was provided to all department heads at a staff meeting after the last council meeting and explained that that was the desire of the council to at all, at all to possibilities to adhere to this. What, to the charter? That there are some situations that will occur that won't, you know, won't fall on this path, but the majority as at all costs should be to uh, make transfers prior to going over Okay, so in talking to people that were on the council, I guess previously when this was adhered to more than it has been in recent years, um, they said the, the policy used to be that you had to, the department had had to go to the town manager first and plead their case, you know, present their case to the town manager. And if you got by the town manager with it, then it came to the council. But if the town manager said, no, find it someplace, you know, you can do without or, you know, come up with whatever the reasoning was, it didn't come to the council. And I guess in light of things that keep appearing on our agenda that probably shouldn't be on our agenda. I just don't know if we, if that's something that the council wants to consider, that before it comes to the council, the department head has to go to the town manager, and, and, and if they approve it, then it's vetted before it comes here, um, rather than us just getting right, every, right. every request. Well, isn't the focus that it should be approved before it's extended? No, 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 but yes, it would still, we would still have to approve it, but it wouldn't come to us for approval unless the town man, you know, they pled their case and they. And they come so prepared. That's okay. fine. Uh, I, I just would like them to get approval before they make the expenditure as opposed to making the expenditure and coming here for approval of the transfer. Correct. I mean, that's, that's what has been happening in the last number of years. So it's just that extra piece and it's just up for discussion if it doesn't make any difference we can just proceed as here yeah I, th I, I I'm, I'm I feel the same way it, everything needs to be approved um, or excuse me approved before spent but also it should be vetted by the town manager before it comes here so to make sure it gives it gives the the the, 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 the town hall itself it gives them the opportunity to be prepared rather than come with you know um, um, not all the correct documents or the correct story or what, what have you. I think that would be very important and help things along. So, um, do we need to... Is that, was that in your discussion to your department heads? No, I think it was just, this, this is the memo. You don't, you don't want to make it overly cumbersome. You, you, I mean, the, was that practice in place? Let me just ask that question. Well, I almost think it's th that's an automatic because no department head put something on our agenda, so they have to get it by the town manager <laughs> before right. we ever get here. Well, it goes through the finance department first, and then it goes to the town manager, and then it comes to us. That's the way. Well, it, I'm, that's, I'm not that, so that's the way it's always worked when I was here. 
because I used to have to argue with Anthony to try to get <laughs> some stuff passed, you know. And uh, I, I'm not so sure that that's the way it's working. I guess. Well, can we make sure it works that way, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we in, can try in it the, that way. In that's the, fine. We can. Tr yeah. We, uh, in fact, in the discussion with the department heads, there are some department heads that are, have been here and and remember the previous you know practice of, of doing that according. This Can way. there be an emergency situation once in a while? Though? Yeah, and that's well, what they have so in there. That yeah, that's there. A, there are going to be some yeah, exceptions. It's always an isolated yeah. situation. Yeah. Like Absolutely. a friend who runs out of salt and he needs to buy salt. Yeah. Well, there's 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 times even in a, in a storm where we have to. It, it, it's usually a declaration or whatever. But there are. Let's just say right now, if uh, water main breaks and whatever, you know, we respond. But you guys all get notified because I go to the town and say, listen, this is what's going on. Doing something way out of budget realm, so that he usually calls and says, just gives you guys a heads up. Right. I mean, there's some certain things you can't. Right. Yeah, I mean, I remember the first uh, first or second year here for me, I think it was 13 or 14, when the power, uh, we lost the power grid, the line outside here on the main thing that blew out the, uh, you know, the terminal inside here. We had a, I don't know, what was that, seven, eight thousand dollars worth of, of uh, you know, equipment that we needed to do. So, I mean, it's, these things just pop up, but not to mean, say that we can't, you know, I get, I get the communication from a department head and, and go through that but I, I think I think those are a, you know those are the emergency sites that we kind of set aside as, as emergencies we got to do what we got to do but the rest of the procedurally uh, as a practice uh, that w I think we go we go back to that okay I mean I, I was on the council when we did it and it worked pretty smooth I mean and there was a line item line item transfers <laughs> and um, a lot of them were not debated about, you know, but at least they were here and they were they were done before they purchased. Were done, were spent. All right. Next is the new business discussion and action review and approval of simple recycling program. Yeah, I, th I think we can s skip over that one. Unfortunately, the uh, um, representative uh, Miss Herrick uh, could not be here tonight, um, and. My suggestion, as I placed in the memo, would have been just to hear from her in presentation, a answer any other questions, refer to the Has Waste. She will be able to make it to the Has Waste meeting, which is this Thursday, um, and then I would just bring that back uh, with their recommendation in terms of roll out and answer any other questions, but just essentially defer this uh, action item until um, the 23rd. And but if anybody has any questions at at this point, I can certainly convey them. Uh, for Thursday's meeting and before the meeting on the 23rd. Thank you. Uh, review and approval of job description for library assistant part-time position. Yeah, so uh, the, the description is there um, for your review and approval and, and it kind of ties in with, um, this, hasn't, this hasn't been uh, looked at in, in, a, in a number of years since 79. Uh, part-time uh, position but I, I kind of put them together to, ha to have you take a look at this but also to explain in the, in the next item that um, and Lauren is here Lauren can speak to it as well uh, you know that she was looking through the budget process to go through and hire with I mean give additional hours within the pool of part-timers that we currently have and that's not working out uh, with her, the reaction that she got and it's necessary to go or she was requesting uh, to go an additional part-time position so um, didn't want uh, you to think this was some sort of backdoor type of way to get another position uh, it's just unfortunately within the uh, pool that she has to draw from she can't fill but I'll let her I'll let her speak to that and so we've kind of tied the uh, upgrade to the description which I said hasn't been touched in quite a while um, with more accurately reflecting what the clerical tasks are for those positions and then asking for your uh, approval for the lifting the hiring fees for one more additional part-time person in that pool. So the job description hasn't been updated since 1979 and obviously there's been a lot of changes in technology, practices, services, resources that we offer and this is just better in line with what's expected of that position. Um, it's just a better review of the duties and responsibilities and the equipment used um, that are currently in place. It just was never um, written out formally. Um, so 
So it's everything that's highlighted new? Yeah. Oh. So basically the whole description. Yeah. Right. I think a lot of the technology wasn't around. I used to have an application wasn't around. The new um, tracks is a little bit different. So is it your, so your budget was increased X number of hours to dis okay. be distributed amongst existing staff members? Correct. And the that. that I'm finding with our current staff is there isn't flexibility in their availability uh, for a variety of valid reasons. Some have other full time jobs, some are in school, some are already maxed out, some have other um, caregiver responsibilities, um, some have health or physical conditions that limit their availability. Um, when I try to consider staffing and scheduling, I have two priorities. So you can do that within your existing budget with the increase that we gave right. you, and so you're just looking to right. add an additional body additional to take. Increase over the yep. Of proofs, it's just for the staff member. Right. Okay. I'm just curious about your, the physical demands. I know you say in here that people with disabilities you, you'd make some accommodations, but they're quite lengthy. You would be able to handle that with all of these if somebody with disabilities We do apply? make it work. Uh, it can be challenging at times just because both of our buildings have multiple floors. Um, and as we've discussed in the past, our accommodations for access in those floors aren't ideal or at least reliable. Um, but it can be done, but it would be... Um, I mean, because you have a lot of demands here in terms of physical... I think people think of a library position that they think of just someone to see behind the desk. But a moving around But you could make those accommodations if somebody with disabilities applied. We have a suggested motion. Um, nothing prepared, just um, approval as presented. Yeah, I would like to make a motion to approve the job description for the library assistant. Um, as presented. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mayor Dooley? Yes. Deputy Mayor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Fornan? Yes. Councilor Miller? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. Councilor Viglione? Yes. Councilor Zampiano. Yes. And next is discussion on lifting hiring freeze for library assistant part-time position. We have a suggested motion for that. I'd like to make a motion that the North Brantford Town Council hereby lifts the hiring freeze to allow the town manager to add one additional employee to the number of part-time library assistants in the library department. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mayor Duty. Yes. Deputy Mayor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor Diamond. Yes. 
Councilor Fornan. Yes. Councilor Miller. Yes. Councilor Rose. Yes. Councilor Viglione. Yes. Councilor Zampiano. Yes. Next item is approval of truck purchase for the Public Works Department. It's quite an impressive truck. So what's in our packet is just cabin chassis? Correct, yeah. Okay. But that, that's the, uh, you got the snow this here. Yeah. yeah. And then is is this the truck that was originally estimated at about, we allocated 250000 for? Yeah. So this is complete at 231 Except, except for the radio system, which didn't contain any of the vendors. That's a separate vendor. Okay. Okay, so we'll be at about 235, roughly. Or, or any other little things, yeah. Okay. And the only other thing on that is that my our, my intention with that price is to pay <coughs> for the cabin chassis when it gets delivered to the body company. And the reason for that is if, if we don't, depending on the body company, how busy or whatever it is, and we're right in there for a 90 day build, <coughs> but there's the floor plan, so if we don't pay for it, as long as the truck is out there, you have to pay a floor plan. So if you pay for the cabin chassis, we get rid of all that extra money. And and then does the when does the warranty start? Upon After delivery? The, the, uh, as soon as we when we accept it, then okay. the truck and the body warranties all kick in. So we get a special waiver from the uh, the, de the dealer or the company that uh, delivers. So we don't the, the warranty starts when we and how long will it take to get this vehicle? Will you have it for this winter or is it next year? It'll, it'll be late winter probably by the time it's done. Okay. Right now they're saying October for delivery to the cab chassis and then 90 to 120 days to go. And that's if they can get all the stuff in. So it all has to be ordered. So if the truck doesn't, if it comes in November, and then the bodies could come in in February. Okay, so we need a motion to approve this, is that? Yes. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the purchase of a 2020 Granite 42 FR single axle Mack cabin chassis through the source well bids number 081716 NAF and number 080114 MTE and also to include body and snow equipment and the plow for a total cost of 231,303.72. Second. Discussion? So Franny, is it a single axle or a tandem? That's a single axle, yeah. And on the uh, specifications, yeah. it's not making sense what the weights are the front at 4580 and the rear at 3762? Yeah, that's because of the new law that came out on uh, uh, the tires. It's called, I think it's called a tip wall. Or not. So those are individual tires? Yeah, the, 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 uh, all the tires have to match now. So whatever you put on the front has to go around. So the all the GBWs change. But yeah, I think you see the rear axis like a, I can't remember. So if you get a mid-sized tire in the front, you have to put the same tire around. And that has something to do with the rollover thing. I don't, I don't know why they changed it, but it's a new federal law. I guess it came out okay. for this year. Yeah, because it, it, like it's, it's under the chassis base model, and it, and it doesn't make sense, the front 4560 and the rear 3762, unless 
you're getting fat tires on the front and that's what they'll carry each or no they normally well, would they, carry like nine thousand right so we're getting the mid-size front tire not the narrow one not the flotation tire so that so now those tires that whatever gbw is on those then in the back it's doubled up the same exact tire so that the rear the, uh, the rear is going to be uh, the GW, uh, Oh, I see. I'm I'm starting to understand this. Like you get down to the engine, they have weight for the front. It's it's the weight that it's put on the right. front axle right. and on the rear axle. Like the engine only puts 460 pounds on the rear axle. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Roll call. Mayor Judy. Yes. Deputy Mayor Angeloni. Yes. Councillor Diamond. Yes. Councillor Fornan. Yes. Councillor Miller. Yes. Councillor Rose. Yes. Councillor Viglione. Yes. Councillor Zampiano. Yes. The next item is review and approval of bid award number nine, 2019-2020 cleaning service for municipal buildings. Is this our current vendor? That yes. Is? Okay. So the only comment that I have under descriptions and exemptions, and they list the each individual buildings. So isn't the ambulance building quarterly that it's cleaned, not weekly? Because it has here three nineteen fifty two per week, but the calculation doesn't come out correctly. And I thought the ambulance building was not on a weekly basis. It's quarterly. It's quarterly. So that should be quarterly then. That, that cost is quarterly? Because four times a year, that would come out to that cost of 1278. So I just want to make sure that that. So I'd like to make a motion to award bid number nine, 2019-20 professional cleaning services for municipal buildings to Advantage Maintenance Incorporated at a base bid price of $48,541 with the note that the company for ambulance building cost is quarterly, not weekly. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mayor Judy. Yes. Deputy Mayor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor Diamond. Yes. Councilor Fornan. Yes. Councilor Miller. Yes. Councilor Rose. Yes. Councilor Viglione. Yes. Councilor Zampiano. Yes. Our next item is review and approval of bid specifications for bid number 11 for reconstruction of tennis courts, Northrop Park. Uh, good evening. Uh, just, just a couple quick notes uh, regarding this. This is for a post tension um, concrete tennis courts at Northrop Park. Um, basically, the same materials that we did in the, at the intermediate school and the, um, and the uh, basketball court at Northrop Park. Um, same materials of construction for the, for the courts and the fencing around the tennis court. The one thing I did do in this is I added an ad alternate for a fence around the Northford basketball court. Uh, that's not currently budgeted, um, but they wanted to get a, a, a firm price on it. Um, the ballpark, I, I think, will be about $15,000 for a fence, but what we asked for is a, basically a, a paved apron around the fence basically an anti-grass strip to make it work, uh, work for public works. So that's included in the, in the bid. Um, the way it's structured is um, the bid would be awarded by the base bid for the, uh, the tennis court, including the nets and the like, for providing an ad alternate course that we can choose to go or not to go with 
for the basketball courts because again that's not currently funded hopefully when we get the bids in we can find some money and, and move forward with that well given the recent circumstances yeah, up there and the amount of money that we are investing right we think it's it a good is, idea it's very prudent right to and i was glad to see that in there because i was going to ask for that as an ad alternate the, the, one, the one caveat i'm going to be um, just point out on the uh, basketball court uh, specifications um, if you just if, if, if you approve it just subject to franny's final review we got to look at where some of the gates or the openings are going to go um, I had to get this, I wanted to get this out to you. And again, the bigger thing being the ad alternate, including it in there. Um, I just want to make sure Franny gets one last look at it before we go out, because we have to add the dates anyway, and we'll just, we'll just add that to it. Those courts are sorry looking up there now. Pardon? The weeds, those courts are sorry looking up there now. Oh, the weeds the, and everything growing through yeah. them. Uh, <coughs> again, we'd like to get it out. I mean, I would anticipate it be sort of Labor Day on, somewhere around that at some point begin the project but in the so the, the goal is to have it done this fall yeah okay yeah. yep okay I would like to make a motion to approve bid number 11-2019-20 reconstruction of tennis courts at Northford Park um, with <coughs> the addition of having a Framarola review uh, the t uh, basketball court layout for the fencing and also on the first page where it um, has to call the recreation director for an appointment if we can just take the name out and just leave it as recreation director since the current one will be retiring on Friday um, it's best not to put a name in then. discussion or is we got a second? I'll second it. Just, just one question. What's the difference between what we're doing here and, and the screw up we did at Stanley T. Williams? Uh, two, two different worlds. One is concrete, one is bituminous concrete, asphalt. Okay. Stanley T. is. Well, asphalt. Stanley T. originally, when that project was presented, it wasn't presented for a tennis court. They were going to take out the old, and they just wanted to get in an area that they could rent out for skating purposes and, and they knew it was a short term thing until it was decided what was going to happen up up there and, and knew and that's why they didn't go with the post tension. Okay. Um, this will have a twenty five year warranty come with it. So those, the problems we're having at Stanley T. Williams are because it's just, it should be the same as down here at Memorial yeah. Courts. And we've had no issues there, right? No. no. Okay. Good. All right. Roll call. Mayor Duty. Yes. Deputy Mayor Angeloni. Yes. Councilor Diamond. Yes. Councilor Flannan. Yes. Councilor Miller. Yes. Councilor Rose. Yes. Councilor Viglione. Yes. Councilor Zampano. Yes. Next is citizen statements and petitions. It's Bill Severstein. Hi, George. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I'm speaking as a citizen, not as a member of the, the Hazardous Committee. Reference to John's uh, contract. First, some of these contracts, it's very hard to find. Uh, I, we have a section on the website uh, where uh, there's some of the contracts are there. Why can't we put them all there? Uh, you know, the ones where there are only the financial statements are there and the manager's reports. By the way, good job on the manager's reports, Mike. Thanks. Actually, I, I thought of, uh, you know, at the talk of times, we, uh, you ever hear the expression, what's old is new again? Well, I had a whole bunch of to talk of times I found in the barn over there, just going through here and there. And, and things you did 15, 20 years ago. Maybe we can bring some of them back. Some were reports. I think there was a couple from the town manager. But there was a, a thing from the Board of Ed. It was Gloria, Aunt Gloria or something. something. Rose, you must remember that, right? Something about, and she would answer questions, whatever. Anyway, as far as the, the John's contract, we gotta bring, again, speaking for myself, we gotta bring a lot more awareness to the uh, to what's going on. and, and I'm just afraid that uh, 
and people are going to get frustrated. They're going to chop up a mattress or something. They're going to put it in either in a trash container or the recycle bin and really contaminate everything. But we're going to bring some more awareness. I'm sure we're going to talk about it at, at our, meal, our meeting. Uh, one thing I did find, an old contract, and I don't know where we left off, uh, Mr. Marino, with the totes. Do we own the totes or not? Yes, we own the totes. Yes. That's right. They're, they're, they're the property of the town, except that the town terminates the contract early. The town has to pay the vendor a dollar per tote by pursuant to the contract. So, uh, so if we get through this year, we own them? Uh, I believe it's two years you own them. Because I, I had the 2017 contract. Mm -hmm. And on the page eight, and the paragraph says contain, uh, containers. Mm -hmm. It's broken down into five, five little liners. And it says the town owns the totes. Right, and in another section, because that was a four-year contract, it was two years, and in two, and we, because under that contract, uh, the vendor uh, approached uh, the town uh, at the toward the end of the second year. There were actually two years left under that contract, and uh, the vendor based on everything that we did at the last meeting and the meeting before, was taking the position that they weren't going to perform. Uh, uh, so that's why That we doesn't explain anything to me. Says <laughs> two years ago, says the town owns the totes. What, I mean, what's harder than that? There wasn't no other words with it. It says five words. Anyway, uh, another thing uh, as far as the uh, uh, looking over that contract, and it's been in the contract for rather long and obviously hasn't been enforced, but you know, he comes down the road with all these mongrel trucks. I, mean, I got a picture on my phone where he was crushing my recyclables. I mean, crushing them. A small truck, nothing big like we're used to. It's one of his trucks, he had another job. All different mongrel brands and writings. Now, it says in the contract, he's supposed to have clearly marked colored vehicles with Johns on it, the person who's doing the contract, with numbers. So, you know, I know we're a little late in the game here now, but somebody's got to be watching what's going on for the next year so we can get a true picture of what the next contract is going to look like. I mean, we all know the prices went up, so we've got to deal with that, even with the next guy. But uh, the big thing is going to determine, you know, what's going to happen this year. The, all those tonnage weights and stuff, are they going to be the same? But uh, going forward, we really got to do our homework in early. Let's not wait till the end of the year and then start jamming in again. Mike goes to the CCM meetings, let's see what we can learn there and uh, see what the other towns are doing. Are you saying you witnessed them putting your recyclable materials into the trash? You said the trash truck. Well, I couldn't look in the truck, but the truck was a, a mongrel truck. It, was, it wasn't the big ones where they dump over yeah. the top. And it was actually going on for a few weeks. It wasn't just in one day. And uh, and it definitely he dumped it in the back. Well, actually, guys, two guys were in. It wasn't even an automatic dump. It's one of the, the old trucks, and it was dumped in. I I couldn't tell what was on the other side of it. But he stood there and he's crushing it, and he's crushing it, and he's, he. I think he was just f filling the load, you know, topping off the load. So when the truck goes to the to uh, Mira or wherever he was sending it, that the truck is full, you know. Uh, but I, I couldn't say it was there. But I actually called over there. And of course, I was told, I said, well, he's crushing it. That's what you call contamination. And he's, uh, I can't say his name, but one of the supervisors, I asked for a supervisor. And he says, we have to crush it. Okay. Not, not to this extent. That's what I was saying. I mean, most of the trucks, you see, dump it over the top. I'm sure it gets pushed. But does it get crushed? Does it need to be crushed? In fact, some of that is in here, in the contract. Enough about that. We got to really, you know, do the homework on this. And the other thing about these nine item transfers, and you know, as a guy sitting back there, I, I'm not. You guys are the financial board, and I, I'm seeing that stuff is getting pushed around, and it's not. Uh, I don't think it's being taken care of properly, unless I'm not understanding something. But let's go back a couple of months. When I believe the uh, 
that a Lovelace at the time, the acting chief, said, because we didn't have a chief, we saved $100,000. Anybody remember that? So they used it to bought a truck and something else. Drone but, and long rifles. Well, I think it was before that. Uh, <laughs> okay. they, bought, they bought a car like, and, and something else. And the truck, that, that was more recent. But last August, didn't you just pay the chief $400,000? So where is extra money? 100000 should have gone towards the 400000 yet. You had to lay out, and it could have made it 300000 Now, you put that same 100000 with the four you paid the chief, now it's a half a mil. It's, it's fuzzy math to me, fuzzy math. So I really don't like this, uh, you know, what's going on with some of these finances and line, line items that doesn't seem proper. And you, you get some new things going on with the, the police chief is now he's, He's throwing in, uh, you know, things he wants for the station. Things are out of whack. Now you're talking a two-story building over there. Now you're up to 9.5 million. A year and a half ago, we were at 1.5 for renovation. Now we're at 9.5. Put another story on it. Put the whole campus in one building over there. Add another three mil, and you'll get away cheap, 15 mil. Thanks. Move into executive session 1-206B, pending claims and pending litigation, or pending litigation. Motion to move into executive session. So moved. Second. Second.